Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our YouTube channel Agreedit. I am your mentor Jeevan H. I completed my undergraduation from US Darwat and I finished my PG from uh, CIU Impal. Presently I am pursuing my PhD in Nematology in ICR New Delhi. And I have secured my first rank in ICR SRF and I have cleared my ASRB net in Nematology 2023. And today we are going to deal with the morphology of the nematodes. Uh, this lecture is in continuation with the last two classes was dealt by Ms. Tulsi. Then I uh, will start with the general morphology of the nematode. Uh, <coughs> before going to the act actual morphology, I would like to cl uh, clarify the term the nematode is. The nematode is a Greek word. Uh, nemma is a thread and the oidus means form. If someone asks what is the definition of the nematode, you should tell that nematode is a thread like organism which looking like tiny thread moving under the microscope which means the nematodes are the thread like microscopic nematodes are the thread like microscopic organism and which have pointed at both the extremities anterior as well as posterior then some of the synonyms of the nematodes like uh, threadworms eelworms roundworms nemmas and crimis and you all are aware about uh, these are uh, terms of nematodes and uh, which is being used by many other peoples in many other countries as you in the last class you already aware about these things and then come to the body shape nematodes are generally a uh, vermiform and cylindrical body with anterior and the posterior part uh, are pointed and mid portion of the nematode is somewhat bulge when compared to the other two extremates and um, if you ask sir uh, is all the nematodes are vermiform only i will say no because some other nematodes also there based on their feeding habit <coughs> feeding habit and habituation and niche uh, that shape and size it varies it get evolved so then uh, some exceptions also there we'll go through some exceptions like uh, first that filiform filiform is a long nematode and with one extremity is very pointed as you are seeing in the first figure and with the example for this is ziphonema longidorus and the paralongidorus and these three genera are belongs to the order Longidoridae. And uh, this is the order in which uh, nematodes, uh, plant, mainly plant, plant parasitic nematodes, um, under this order, having a very long, which is considered as a long nematode when compared to the other plant parasitic nematode. But whereas, in case of if someone asks which is the longest plant parasitic nematode, then you should tell that Paralongidorus epimetic and if someone asks you uh, the longest just longest nematode which is the longest nematode then you should tell that is uh, uh, placentonema gigantisma and similarly some other shapes like a sausage or plum shape uh, sausage or plum shape uh, i will give some uh, i will uh, um, i will explain like uh, um, sausage you can imagine like a short fellow with obese body if short fellow with obese body means how we how we will look then you, you look like an a plum just sausage or means uh, just is obese short and obese similarly one of our nematode that is a cryconematid genera cryconematid <coughs> in this nematode see here in the figure 2 here it is a short nematode even some somewhat fat when compared to the other ones you can compare with the figure 1 so this nematode is considered as a sausage or the plump shape with the example is cryconema and you should not forget this example because this is the typical example for the uh, sausage or the plum shape because you in filiformi you uh, you can get so many example other than the ziphonema longidorus and the paralongidorus but whereas in case of the sausage shape you will get only example is the cryconema okay then a pyriformi or the flash shape <coughs> this is also one of the typical example um like uh, females of uh, uh, Melodogenia and the Terabritis, the these uh, sedentary 
uh, endoparasitic nematode which assumes different shape mainly females only females of melodogan and heterobates assumes different shape once it start feeding inside the root okay just consider this is the roots and once the juvenile center inside the root inside the root this is the vascular system this juvenile go on large in the vascular system just uh, uh, put is of uh, feeding a um, uh, sorry mouth inside this vascular system and start sucking the sap once it starts sucking the uh, sap the posterior part of the nematode get bulged only the female like this female did like this and egg laying and it will lay egg laying on the surface of the root this is in case of the melodogenae we uh, we will uh, we uh, we are going to clear more detail about this biology of melodogenae heterobates and uh, rotilinkers or uh, radophella so many other nematodes in biology class just as a, as if now just a uh, clear generally general morphology what are the things what i am going to uh, describe here just considered as in general morphology i am going to clear in a biology of the uh, next uh, in a next upcoming class biology of the nematodes then one more example is the kidney shaped or the rhiniform kidney shape uh, name only suggest that rhiniform that means here it is the uh, semi endo sedentary parasite uh, the um, uh, anterior some portion of the nematode uh, which keep inside the root system and start sucking the sap and only posterior part of the nematode get bulge so it look like an kidney shape then then come to the sexual dimorphism you all are aware about this sexual dimorphism and uh, uh, sexual dimorphism is a very important uh, topic in case of nematode because all the nematode will not exhibit the sexual dimorphism some a typical example for this sexual dimorphisms uh, i am going to clear in this uh, uh, slide that uh, sexual dimorphism as you all know that morphological differences between the genders of the same species is referred as a sexual dimorphism and both the sexes are look uh, alike in most of the nematode species male being smaller than the female yes this term you should this sentence you should remember because someone can ask you in the assertion and reasoning type of questions here uh, in case of entomology in case of the insects also the male are short male are, are small when compared to the female okay in case of nematodes also same the uh, female is long and somewhat in with respect to size is bigger when compared to the male okay so this is how the sexual dimorphism occurs and some of the examples mainly in case of the order tylenkida what happened um in sedentary semi endo as well as the endoparasitic uh, uh, feeding behavior of uh, uh, melodogenes that example that female melodogenes as i told uh, once the juvenile enter inside the root system the female start sucking the sap and it get bulge but in case of the males but in case of the male what happened in most of the under tylenkida order most of the males are being used just for mating with the female and for production of the offsprings and only a few examples like uh, pratilinkers that that means lesion nematode uh, radophallus in uh, not in radophallus just in uh, uh, one example like a lesion nematode in this lesion nematode all the stages are parasitic including male female j2 j2 juveniles uh, everything so uh, in case of female melodogene the male is looking bulge but whereas in case of the may uh, of uh, female is looking bulge whereas in case of the male just it is vermiform and in case of the cyst also cyst nematode that is heterodera and the globodera they are socket females are socket shape and male are just vermiform so this um, a sexual dimorphism can differ between the uh, two sexes of the same species then come to the body posture body posture um, what is body posture here see um, once the nematode once the nematode get killed by naturally or by artificial means artificial deliberately if you kill the nematode for staining or uh, some slight preparation purpose all the nematode after are uh, getting dead it assumes some posture body posture so based on the uh, the, the different body posture in the different nematode based on this body posture the nematode is being identified okay 
based on this body posture nematode also can be identified so this body posture is very much important it has a significance in case of taxonomic purpose okay taxonomic purpose so uh, is there any examples yeah many examples are there i am just going to frame the very important examples here example pratylinchus species pratylinchus uh, that is a lesser nematode uh, pratylinchus as you are seeing in the first figure here after after killing the nematode it assumes the almost straight a straight posture body posture okay whereas in case of the aplolemus that ventrally uh, curve somewhat slightly ventrally curve in case of second slide you can see slightly curve okay ventrally curve uh, you can also uh, you should remember that if you kill the nematode if almost all the nematode after killing after being killed um, it assumes the body posture and almost it bent towards ventrally most of the nematode bent towards ventrally okay and that uh, degree of uh, that uh, rotate curve uh, that depends on uh, de uh, that varies with respect to the species to species but most uh, um, in most of the species uh, after after being killed the nematode will assume uh, that curvature you can see towards ventrally okay then in case of the tylenchorhynchus stunt nematode and the paratylenchus uh, these nematode assume the exactly c shape as you are seeing in the third figure exactly c shaped curve okay then here helicotylinkus and rotilinkus species i just highlighted this fourth example because it's very important for the exam point of view the helicotylinkus and the rotilinkus even name only suggested that helico helico means spiral spiral nematode this is also called a spiral nematode so it assumes the spiral shape the posterior part of the nematode will get spiral once it get dead so based on that portion if you see under the microscope you can mix all these nematode and if you see under the microscope you can easily identify uh, the many nematode most of the nematode by their uh, po body posture okay then uh, one exception is there as i told you before almost all the nematode will assume uh, assume the body curvature towards the ventral side but except one nematode that is dorsella dorsella will assume even name suggests that dorsella means it assumes c shaped towards dorsally it bent towards dorsally okay then come to the body size and segmentation um almost all the nematode uh, that i uh, i'm talking most probably i'm just concentrating i'm just emphasizing on plant parasitic nematode here okay plant parasitic nematode because as as exam point of view plant parasitic nematodes are very important so i am just giving more emphasis on plant parasitic nematode so um the general the body size of the plant parasitic nematode is between 0.3 to 2 mm okay uh, longest uh, longest plant parasitic nematode is a para uh, sorry para uh, para longidorus epimetic which uh, goes up to the 1 cm and in case of the smallest is a para tylenchus Uh, epimetic which comes up to the 0.2 to 0.3 mm size okay then if someone ask as i just discussed before that uh, um what is the uh, which is the biggest nematode which, sorry which, uh, which is the longest nematode longest nematode just if they ask longest nematode uh, if they didn't mention about plant parasitic or free living nematode just longest nematode means you should you should opt for the option that is a placentonema gigantism okay in case of plant parasitic nematode para longidorus epimetic okay don't get confused then come to the segmentation um in case of you already aware about in insects insects are segmented uh, but when com when comes to the nematode nematodes are looking like segmented you can see here nematodes are looking like segmented but it's not actually segmented as in case of the earthworm on or in case of the uh, insects but it's looking like segmented so basically nematodes are not segmented so unsegmented body and outer cuticle is often marked with a superficial transverse groove superficial trans just concentrate on this term superficial just superficial it is not internally transverse okay as in case of earthworm and the insects so outer body cuticle is marked with a superficial transverse group that is referred as the striations you can see here 
दिस मार्किंग्स ऑन द क्यूटिकल ओके दिस मार्किंग्स इज रेफर्ड एज द स्ट्राइशन ओके एंड इन केस ऑफ क्राइकोनेमेटिड यू शुड रिमेम्बर दिस वन इन केस ऑफ क्राइकोनेमेटेड इन दिन दिस फिगर यू कैन सी सी द स्ट्राइशन आर डीप एन ऑफ सी यर स्ट्राइशन आर वेरी क्लियर यर ओके स्ट्राइशन आर वेरी डीप सो इन केस ऑफ क्राइकोनेमा दट्स वाई वी आर रेफरिंग दिस एज रिंग नेमोटोड बिकॉज इफ यू सी द uh um, um surface of the uh, cricoenematids you can find very clear very clear segment is almost looking like a segmented like this on the surface of the cuticle okay so that's why we are referring the cricoenema as a ring nematode and also this uh, striations in case of cricoenema is called as annules or annulations annulations okay then in addition to the transverse striations the longitudinal markings are also there longitudinal marking this is called as transverse okay if you take the cross section this is considered as a transverse marking and and see here in the lateral in the lateral portion of the nematode you can see the longitudinal markings this longitudinal marking is referred as the long uh, this longitudinal marking is referred as a ls okay this ls are uh, helpful in case of in some nematode which helps in the changing direction in case of uh, marine nematodes okay and most of the in case of uh, some plant parasitic nematode also you can see these lateral lines but um, in case of later in case of plant parasitic nematode it is not uh, much useful when compared to the other marine nematodes okay then body coloration and uh, symmetry um the nematode body is colorless and uh, transparent in case of nematode you can see um uh, if you are observing under the microscope you can easily see the uh, intestine part inside the intestine part as uh, some uh, food material you can easily see because it's completely transverse and colorless okay and easily you can see the stylet also stoma stylet and uh, esophagus and uh, uh, some reproductive tracts also you can see inside the nematode because it is colorless and transparent and body region then you come to the body region here body region means nematode is actually not uh, separated or a seg uh, as i told segment uh, not segmented and also it is not um a uh, region with respect to particular region means uh, in case of the insect you can you can you can uh, di uh, different the body portion into the thorax abdomen and a uh, th eight thorax and the abdomen but in case of the nematode you can't say like that because it's just continuous body without any uh, segmentation or the any constrictions in between so for our sake for our uh, uh, convenience for the study uh, for the study purpose uh, we are differentiating the body region into the two part mainly that is the head and tail region that anterior region uh, anterior anterior region which consisting of the mouth lip and the stoma that is considered as the head and the uh, a region behind the anus is considered as the tail okay then come to the uh, and longitudinally now we are considering the body region just consider this is the nematode okay this is the mouth region and this is the tail region this is the anus and this is the tail region then if you consider longitudinally longitudinally means just all over the all along the body just we are for the sake of our, pu our uh, study purpose we are differentiating nematode into the uh, four parts that is dorsal ventral and two lateral side okay similarly in case of the insects then come to the symmetry come to the symmetry uh, basically nematode is a bilateral symmetry 
then come to the structures like lip if you consider the lip region uh, you can you can divide the lip region into the six equal parts sorry you can divide the lip region into the six equal parts one one two three four five six so hence the name for the lip region we are um, that the symmetry of the lip region is the exa radiated okay and similarly in the stoma and the pharynx in case can you you can see here in this figure the stoma or the pharynx we can divide this in a three equal parts we can divide in a three equal part one two and three three equal parts hence the stoma or the pharynx is a th uh, tri radiated symmetry and in case of the nervous system reproductive system and the excretory system uh, these systems are considered as an asymmetric because we can't divide uh, any uh, we can't divide this system in a two equal parts then come to the body organization basically nematode uh, nematode is considered as a tube inside the tube which means outer body tube and the inner body tube okay that the tube inside the tube okay the it consisting of two tube that is uh, outer body tube and the inner body tube see this is the outer body tube and this is the inner body tube okay then this outer body tube is uh, wider longer represents the body wall okay and this inner body tube is smaller narrow and represent the elementary canal it's consisting of elementary canal or the intestine okay then these two body tube runs all along the body from mouth tip to the tail tip okay then these two body tube meets at the two points in the nematode body one at the lip region one at the lip region and one more at the rectum region in the posterior section in the rectum region and the lip region okay then then from here onwards we are just i'm just explaining uh based on the two tubes uh, I, i'm considering the two tube that means outer body tube and the inner body tube first i'm going to explain the outer body tube. what is what actually the outer body tube consisting of the outer body tube will start with the outer body tube first the outer body tube consisting of cuticle epidermis outer cuticle epidermis and the muscle layer okay and here you can see cuticle hypodermis and the muscle layer these are all muscle connections okay then come to the cuticle cuticle is a non cellular non living tough elastic layer and uh, this uh, this layer is being secreted by the hypodermal cells okay this cuticle is secreted by the hypodermal cells and this uh, cuticle is act as an exoskeleton and protect the in uh, protect the uh, inner soft body body tissues apart from uh, covering of the body uh, externally the cuticle invagination also we can see invagination means a uh, just um, a deviation from the cuticle that means you can see some uh, uh, extensions extension or the invagination on the cuticle like uh, oral aperture excretory pore ulva anus okay and the, this cuticle cover the body the from the externally that is called as external cuticle what you are seeing here this is called as external cuticle and one more that is internal cuticle this internal cuticle which cover the internal body structures internal body structure like uh, reproductive system intestine okay then some invagination as i was telling uh, apart from this invagination you can see uh, one conspicuous in invaginations uh, cuticular invagination like bursa in case of the male uh, you can see the this bursa that is caudal alley in this figure you can see ha huh. sorry in this male nematode you can see the in the posterior uh, posterior region of the nematode that uh, the lateral invagination of the cuticle that is called as bursa 
this bursa which is helps during the mating which claps the female during the mating then what are the functions of the cuticles this cuticle uh, prevent the radial formation radial deformation of the body radial deformation means uh, this cuticle protects the uh, maintains the uh, that uh, integrity of the nematode body which means uh, which protects nematode uh, uh, deformities of the uh, uh, shape and shape and size of the nematode uh, which is maybe due to the undulated undulation undulated motion which is caused by the longitudinal muscles which means if suppose a nematode uh, suddenly um, um, uh, uh, suddenly undergoes vigorous movement so sometimes what happen uh, it is a possibility of rupturing or uh, rup rupturing the body uh, body cuticle so uh, uh, being the cuticle is an elastic in nature so it maintain maintain the body extension up to a certain uh, certain extent so it maintain the radial deformation uh, prevents the radial deformation of the body and also is being an elastic in nature it maintain the turgor pressure when compared to the external environment it maintain the turgor pressure of the body and sometimes in the environment harmful elements also there it prevents the entry of such harmful uh, elements in, into the body and uh, it helps in the uh, exchange of gases carbon dioxide and the oxygen and cuticle is a seat of many sensory structures like uh, uh, amphids phasmids and emisionates and diorites so many things okay and a longitudinal alley of the cuticle assists for of course the cuticle is assessed for locomotion and it also supports the musculature you can see here the cuticle followed by hypodermis hypodermis followed by the muscle cells okay then come to the second layer after the cuticle that is hypodermis hypodermis uh, is a um, yeah, single cellular or unicellular or maybe sometimes syncytial what is syncytial syncytial means multinucleated cell condition okay multinucleated cell condition or it may be the unicell uh, uninucleated cell condition also and this hypodermis is lying between the cuticle and the muscle layer if you consider this is the muscle layer and this is the cuticle and this will be the hypodermis okay then basically hypodermis as i told this is a unicellular as a sometimes is also syncytial in nature and uh, the layer between the cuticle as well as the muscle layer and this uh, hypodermis are uh, going to bulge at the four different regions four region dorsally ventrally sorry dorsally ventrally and two lateral regions this bulged region is referred as cords dorsal cord ventral cord and two lateral cords right and left this is dorsal cord okay and out of these four dorsal cords two lateral cords are very important because nerve cord nerve cord and excretory channel runs in these two lateral cords okay and the space between these two any any two cords is referred as inter intercordal space and this space is filled by muscle cells okay this for uh, what you are seeing green portion this is muscle cell muscle cells okay then come to the function of the hypodermis hypodermis uh, hypodermis secret and maintain the cuticle and uh, which accumulates the protein and the nucleic acid which is very much important for the molting and hypoder hypodermal glands which act as a osmotic and the uh, ionic regulations then come to the somatic musculature um, after the hypodermis as i mentioned here the inter intercordal space is filled by the muscle cell let's read on muscle cell this muscle cell 
मजल सेल्स आर अरेज लांगिट्यूडली बीनीत हाइपोडर्मिस इन द फोर इंटर कॉडल जोन जस्ट बीनीत हाइपोडर्मिस ओके विच इज कंटिन्स फ्रॉम द माउथ टिप टू द टेल टिप विच इज कंटिन्स ऑल अलॉन्ग द बॉडी रीजन ओके माउथ टू द टेल टिप देन बेसिकली मजल सेल्स इन केस ऑफ द नेमोटोड वी आर डिफरेंशिएटेड विच आर डिवाइडेड इन टू द मजल सेल ईच मजल सेल इज डिड इन टू द टू पार्ट जस्ट कंसिडर दिस इफ दिस इज द मजल सेल सम पार्ट विच दिस थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉल्ड एज मयोफिब्रिल्स दिस मयोफिब्रिल हेल्प्स इन द मूवमेंट ऑफ द सेल मजल सेल्स This is a, a contractal a contractal zone, the contractal fibrillar zone. The zone which consisting of myofibril is referred as the contractal fibrillar zone or zone. This is nucleus and this is cytoplasm. And the zone which consists uh, doesn't consists any myofibril that is referred as non-contractal, non-contractal or sarcoplasmic zone. Okay, then. what are the function of these muscle cells muscle cells helps in the locomotion and uh, which is also act as a reservoir of the stored food material then different types of muscle cells in the nematode uh, mainly muscle cells uh, what we are differentiate uh, dividing that is mainly based on muscle cells are differentiated into the three types okay three type based on what based on shape as well as the arrangement of the contractile fibers that means contractile fibers nothing but myofibrils okay then what are those three uh, types of muscle cells that is uh, platymyorian coelomyorian and the sarcomyorian in this figure you can see the platymyorian that is a white flat base if you consider just consider this is the hypodermis okay this is hypodermis above this um the muscle layer is going to attach the white flat base white flat base uh, with contractile fibers limited to the base see here contractile fibers or myofibrils are limited to the base okay and which is close to the hypodermis and this type of structure is referred as the platymyorian okay and this type of platymyorian are present in case of small nematodes mainly in case of the ppn that is plant parasitic nematodes okay then come to the coelomyorian muscle in case of coelomyorian muscle the base of the coelomyorian muscles are narrow okay and the myofibril are more concentrated on the side walls okay side walls okay and this type of muscle cells are we can observed in the large nematodes large nematode means mainly in case of zephanema longidorus and uh, long nematodes many free living nematodes free living nematodes because these are all big in size and also activity is more when compared to the plant parasitic nematode okay then come to the sarcomyorian muscles here round muscle with a contractile fibers all along its circumstance here all along its circumstance okay and this is somewhat specialized muscle this circum uh, sarcomyorian muscles are specialized muscle because um this type of muscle which is present uh, found in the uh, movement of the stylate ulva spicule the movement of these organisms are um, conducted by the sarcomyorian muscles and again we are Dif uh, are uh, are uh, uh, again we are differentiating muscle cells based on the number okay arrangement or the number of muscle cells myomyorian and polymyorian if the interstitial zone this this interstitial zone consisting of only three means uh, two to five cells let's consider one two three four five if it is, if the interstitial zone consisting of only 2 to 3 cells then we are considering this is as a 
Miro Mayorian. Miro Mayorian. If more than phi, phi or more than phi, then we are considering it as the sorry poly Mayorian. Okay. Here, one thing you should always remember um, platymayorian muscle cells are miromayorian and coelomayorian cells are polymayorian. Why? See here, platymayorian that is surface area of the platymayorian cells are more. Surface area of platymayorian cells are more. So, it occupy more space and accommodation of cells is less when compared to the sarcomayorian or sorry coelomayorian okay uh, see here narrow base we can accommodate in the interstitial zone more than phi if it is the narrow base we can accommodate like this okay so all coelomayorian or polymayorian sarcomayorian you just consider the polymayorian see the polymayorian the base is broad so we can't accommodate much cell in the interstitial zone so number of cells in the interstitial zones is less when compared to the coelomayorian and one more important thing all most of the plant parasitic nematode most of the plant parasitic nematode are consisting of this polymayorian muscle because plant parasitic nematode movement movement or locomotion is very less when compared to the many free living nematodes because free living nematodes are vigorous in movement even though the body size comparatively very high okay, not comparatively it's big when compared to plant parasitic nematode free living nematodes size is big and also the vigorous movement will be there so for this vigorous movement more if the if more muscle cell are present means the activity of the nematode also more if less muscle cells then activity is very less so activity where in case of plant parasitic nematodes are very less so here just platymayorian cells are there whereas in case of the uh, very active nematodes like free living nematode there the uh, coelomayorian cells are present okay uh, up to here i uh, will stop with the inner body tube this comprises of all the uh, it comprises all the topics under the inner uh, outer body tube so from next class onwards we'll start with the inner body tube and uh, inner body tube with with uh, some systems like excretory system digestive system reproductive system nervous system so we'll deal with in the um, we'll deal with in inner body tube okay up to here if you have any doubt uh, please uh, free feel to ask any questions and be clear with yourself before going to exam thanks for watching this video stay tuned thank you